Jimelang, welcome to another episode of Unscripted. My name is Matawe Matapola, and today our guest is the First Lady of Motswako, Fifi Cooper. Welcome, Fifi. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for inviting me. I'm all right. So, from the First Lady of Motswako to now being the Boss Lady, yeah. how has the transition been? Um, it has been really great. You know, um, it it was a decision that I really took. And I've always wanted to take that decision, you know, to have my own record label. So being the boss lady, obviously right now, it's not as easy as I thought it would be because now um, it's not only about the music, it's about, you know, learning the business side of things. So I can just say I'm enjoying every single moment. Um, I'm learning as much as I can. And it takes care and see the side of the board like you found. Do you have a mentor to take you yes. through the business side of things? Yes, definitely I do. Um, actually, he's my manager. I partnered with Lucia Entertainment for bookings and management. So he's the one actually just, you know, showing me the right things to do. Yeah. What has been the challenges though since you became the boss lady? Um, being the boss lady, like I said, now I also have to, you know, deal with the financial side of things and things are so expensive in this industry. So the challenges are, you know, um, making sure that, you know, even with payments, everything is on time and there's always a budget, no more spending, jail, you know, going out for no reason. So now I'm very cautious with like, um, how I spend the money because, um, I'm trying to build this company and I would like this company, you know, to, to be successful. Mm. It must yeah. be difficult though from having a, a, a stipend or a salary yeah. in a big uh, uh, record label yeah. where you know every month guarantees you perhaps yeah. getting uh, 30 grand or 15 or so and now you yeah. have to do it on your own. Yeah, I mean, um, it's a step that I chose to take and I'm ready. And like I said, I'm willing to learn. And obviously I want to grow. I don't just want to be an artist for the rest of my life. I'm 27 years now and my son is growing up. So I need to toughen up and you know, learn some other things. And yeah, so I'm ready. Obviously it's not gonna be easy, but I'm ready. Have you signed new artists as well under your record label or it's still you? Yeah, no, I do have one artist. Um, he's also from Mafikin. He goes by the name of Easy Lab. Um, and like I said, I'm allowing myself to learn. Because one thing I will tell you, artists are babies. I'm an artist, I know that. So I, I, I also want to learn how to, you know, manage someone. And, and I choose to do it with someone that I know first. Mm. So I can learn, like, because for me, an artist is, is a package. You, you, you can't just be a dope rapper. You, you need to know how to do interviews. You need to be hungry. You need to know that you have to go out and, you know, perform. Nobody needs to force you. So I'm still looking at, you know, at that, you know. So it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take me a while until I'm ready to, and like, so you find your place. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about uh, your freedom now. You had uh, a legal battle as well, which was publicized. It was all over yeah. uh, the newspapers, magazines and yeah. that. How did you feel to finally get your justice, if I have to put it that yeah. way, and finally be free to perform some of your music? Um, I've always knew that there is no way you can stop me from performing my songs. I just always knew that. And even when I was, you know, during the court case, I still believed that somehow somebody's gonna see that this is injustice. And I'm very grateful that Julius came on board and like he helped me um, with the EFF lawyers. And we finally got my freedom. Um, you know, now I can perform my songs. And, you know, the thing is for me, it was dragging me, you know, financially and emotionally. Um, I couldn't even like drop my album. I've been working on my album for like two years, but I couldn't drop um, the work because things were just too messy, you know. Um, I couldn't even feature people on the, like I would say, you know, celebrity friends on the album because nobody wanted, wanted to touch wanted me. To touch nobody you. wanted to walk with me. So I literally had to be on my own, like legit, and just be with my day ones. 
it's just so grateful that I had my fans supporting me the whole time. And, you know, that just kept me moving. And I'm just happy. Were you treated at the previous yeah. level? Yeah. What were some of the ill treatments that you had to endure? No, the thing is, um, you know, when people got, you know, when people started coming, new artists, they were told that I'm a diva, so people treated me otherwise. And you can imagine if you have to travel with these people and they don't even like you, but they don't really know you, it's like, why am I even here, you know? So there were like a lot of things. I couldn't even go to studio anymore because we had to all share the studio and they would like, you know, give negative comments and that would like disturb like my creativity. And what's beautiful now is I have my own studio, you know, in my house next to my bed. I can wake up like 3 a.m. and record whatever I want to record. So I feel like some challenges are there, you know, just to show you, just to show you how life is and how you can grow. Yeah. How important is it to own your own work and be your own boss and do it yourself? It's very, very, very important. And I feel like everything, you know, Everything that's happening lately, I think, you know, even the young kids can see um, what record labels can do uh, to kids. Because one thing I will tell you is that, you know, we get approached at a young age and at the time we don't even understand, we just have the talent. And that's what kills a lot of, you know, artists. Because you get yourself into something not even being aware. Because these contracts, trust you, Trust you me, it's quite a thing. But speak to God, so said lawyer. You will think you will think you understand, but when you are you not advised to get a lawyer yourself? No, nah, sometimes it's not even about that. Sometimes they just give you ten k. You're excited. We do me. We want ten k. Ten k. You're thinking. So what I'm saying is, most rapidly labels take advantage of like young kids. I was worried when I was signed. There was a 16 year old boy just who just signed and I'm thinking, aren't you even supposed to be in Did school? you read your contract? Though? Yes, I did. I actually had a lawyer. That's why I was able to fight the case, you know, because I knew that, you know, it's a split. You have your percentage. I have my percentage, but I've never even seen a cent from my percentage. So you you were not receiving money, your percentage? I was. I, it was an allowance. Like I said, it started with like 50,000 and then to 20 then to 25 but at the time we were doing more than 15 shows a month mm. yeah. you are your own woman now yeah. the album that you've been working on for the past two years is finally out uh take me back oh yes who must take you back God should we great. take you back your friends should take you back um, take us through the journey take me back yes um the reason why i called my album take me back is the fact that when I was signed, people were confused. People were calling me a trap queen. And I'm not a trap queen. I'm Motoko's first lady. And I will always be Motoko's first lady. So people kind of, you know, lost who Fifi Cooper really is. So I'm just taking my fans back to who the real Fifi Cooper is. Mm. During the process of uh, the legal battle and you not being able to perform, did you also lose who Fifi Cooper is? Not really. I feel like I'll never forget, you know, who Fifi Cooper is, especially for the fact that I rap in mostly my mother tongue. And that's who I am legit. Like, I can never lose that. So, during the court case, I still performed my songs. Like I said, I always knew that it's not possible for you to tell me I cannot perform my song. Mm. So, I still performed the songs. It's just that event organizers were just not booking me because this thing was out there that she's not performing the songs and also they didn't want to get into trouble. Are you getting gigs now? Yeah, definitely. I'm actually having a tour uh, for the album. Um, the whole of um, September, I'll be touring the country. Mm -hmm. 21 songs, I mean 21 tracks. Why so many songs? I feel like there are not even many. Like um, I had to choose from 40 songs. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I've been working on this album for two years. And I feel like because I do music based on my everyday experiences. A lot has been happening. That's why I got to write a lot. Like every day was something happening, you know. Either my mom is in hospital because of this thing that's happening in the media, saying Fifi Cooper, what what, 
or it can be my page has been given to ambitious new artists. I have something to write about. It's still my page. I opened it in high school. You know, so things that happens to me on a daily basis gives me enough story. That is Fifi Cooper, the fighter, the first lady of Motoko and boss lady. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you so much for having me. I'm feeling so high, I think this is my end. I think this is my end. For you, we'll pray for you. My ride or die, I would even take a bullet for you. The future is you. I don't know if I can imagine this.